For now, though, London City is the preserve of the 146, and Captain Rice is about to begin his descent. We're now flying at 4,000 feet. We're established on the localizer for runway 28, uh, London City. Center line. Send at 3,000 feet further with the RS-6354. Just been cleared at 3,000 feet on the QNH. I'm now leaving 4,000, going down to 3,000. We're tracking with the Thames on our left. We'll be passing Tilbury very shortly. That warning sound was telling us we had 1,000 to go to our new altitude. We're approaching the glide slope. We have two miles to run. I'm going to ask for flap to be selected. The flap is now travelling to 18 degrees. The noise you hear is the flat travelling. Now I want the gear down, so I'm going to request... Captain Rice needs to know now is which way the wind is blowing at ground level. So we have 33018 gusting 29 as the wind, so we have quite a lot of drift. That crosswind gusting diagonally across the runway will make a smooth landing difficult. On the Slope indicator. The autopilot is now disconnected. Flap, the 146 lands at speeds much lower than conventional jet airliners and can easily come to a halt well within the 1200 feet length of the runway. The British Aerospace 146 is an aircraft which has a special place in the affections of all its pilots. It'll be a sad day when I don't fly anymore, I don't fly the 146 anymore. But one day I'll have to hang my head up. Unfortunately. As for the future of the 146, that's taken another turn. A whole range of four new versions are now entering service all over the world. And the family now has a new name, or rather a distinguished old one, harking back to the dawn of civil jet transport. Nearly half a century after the first flight of that pioneering regional jet, the Avro Jetliner, the name on the new breed is Avro, the RJ Avroliner. <laughs> 